Boom, what up, Zane here. And we are going to be doing the longest palindromic substring. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so basically we're given a string called S in this case, and we just have to figure out the characters that are symmetrical, the longest consecutive characters that are symmetrical. So it's much easier just to look at an example. So B, A, B, you can see that these are both uh, the it's the same backwards and forwards like race car or mom or dad and we have and there's you can look up tons of palindromes online by the way if you're interested and we also have this one that's backwards and forwards the same thing so this would be oh actually so just BB is repeating so uh, BB would be the longest palindromic sub substring so okay first thing we want to do is we want to convert this string into a vector so that we can have access to the uh, different characters by their index and just make it a little easier to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. So we will say let mute s, we'll just call it s, I don't know, uh, equals, so we need to convert this to characters, convert, collect that, those characters into a vector. And we'll have to explicitly declare the type to be a vector of characters. So this should be a vector now. And so now we can treat it just like a regular vector. All right, so how we wanna do this is we're gonna have to iterate through each character of the string. So um, there's not really a whole lot of speed up we can do. So basically we're just gonna start at the first character and look to the right, look to the left, see if there's any, uh, see if they're matching, and then go outward. But first we have to also plan for the case when there's two in a row, like here, there's two in a row. So the A is not equal to S, but this is still a palindrome because it's still symmetrical. A, A is still symmetrical. So this, this would still be a palindrome, S, A, A, S. So we'll just, as many characters as there are in a row that are the same, we'll go ahead and skip those as well, um, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense when you see it probably, sort of like the palindra. Okay, so we'll iterate i from zero to the length of the length of s. And so that will just, i will just give us the index of every character in s. And so then we will, um, we'll need two index indices. We'll need a left and a right. So left will be the index of the left character, right will be the index of the right character. And we'll just go outwards, making sure that it's all symmetrical. And left will equal I, and then also right will equal I. And that also needs to be mutable. And so let's just go ahead and return an empty string just to shut up the compile, the syntax highlighting. And so that we can get rid of those. Thank you. Okay. And so now we need to see all the characters in a row. So basically for D, that would be one, but also if there's two A's in a row, that, would, that could also be the center. So we'll say while j while uh, the right is less than uh, the length of the string. So let's just go ahead and set a variable length to the length of the string just so that we don't have to type that out all the time. And I'm not sure there might be a performance uh, increase by not having by assigning it to a variable rather than retrieving that from the memory in that string, uh, in the string struct, so I'm not sure. So we'll say while right is less than length and actually right plus one because we're gonna be testing the character to the right and uh, the right i plus, er, <laughs> sorry, the um, s at position right plus one 
is equal to left is equal to s at left and so that way we'll just skip all the center characters that are identical and then we'll and then that will be our center and then we'll uh, iterate check the outward to see if uh, those are symmetrical so we'll see if s is symmetrical to s then we'll check if d is symmetrical to s that next s and it's not so the longest palindrome would be s a a s okay oops and then while that is true we'll just increment right so we'll move the right window to the right one and then we'll also say while right plus one is less than length and while left um, is greater than zero and while s is s right plus one is equal to s s left minus one so then we're just comparing those outer so so we if i is two and or, or if left is two and right is three we would check if four and one are identical which they are it's s and s and so that's what that code is doing and then if they are then we will just increment the right one and we will also increment the not the light left one okay and so that will expand our window by the one because we've checked that they are symmetrical so we'll also need to track the start and the end so we'll say um we'll say the end start is zero and the end is also zero so we'll start with uh, an empty substring essentially or well we'll get an empty substring so then we'll return the character so we'll collect the characters into a string from the start to the end and that will be our return value so we'll say s uh, from start to and up including the end and we'll iter collect and this will that should cast that or it should automatically make that a string then if this substring is longer than the current length which the start and end will change, so start minus end will be the length, then we will set the new start and end to the right and the left of the current iteration. So we'll say if right minus left is greater than end minus start, then, we'll, then the new end will be the right and the new start will be the left. And so that should work for us. So we'll just run our test cases. Okay, so a little logical error there. We should actually be going backwards with left. So that was the problem. So we'll try it now. And we're passing all the tests. Um, this doesn't actually need to be mutable. So we can just uh, change that. And now let's go ahead and paste it into leak code. So. We'll paste that in and run it and check our score. Last time we got four milliseconds. Let's see if I can beat it if I'm the best. So, no, I can't. And that's because for an empty string, this isn't going to work for an empty string because we go from zero to zero and this is inclusive of the end. So we can just say if, we'll say if when, equals zero then return <clears throat> just an empty empty string and we'll copy that to our problem to our submission and that's fine this doesn't matter anyway all right so we'll see if that works and it does, and we got two zero milliseconds and two megabytes. So I think this is the, this is the lowest theoretical amount of uh, memory it could possibly take up. 
So, we're the best yet again. Should we even bother looking at anyone else's? Okay, I guess we'll just, we'll take a look at one other one. Okay, dynamic programming. Um, so this is gonna use a lot of memory to do that because he's keeping track at every single index. Not really necessary. Um, so this guy is doing a different one for even and a different one for odd, which we kind of solved that with this one line or this these three lines of code by going ahead and expanding the center. So <clears throat> we kind of avoided that problem, which is nice. And let's see. Okay. Well, we are the best and we've beaten everyone else again. So I'm happy with that. And in our next episode, we're going to be looking at zigzag conversion. So join me in the next video, please. And hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, whatever.